Discipline gives structure in our lives to attain freedom. Therefore, let's learn from Tony Robbins about the value of discipline. Thanks for watching. If you find today's video informative, please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing for more content like this. Self discipline is a key component to achieving success in life, and today we look at ways you can instill discipline in your life to pursue your goals. We do this with the help of the ever disciplined and the fantastic Tony Robbins, a man who has proven his methods work. However, before we get into how to instill discipline, first let's understand why discipline is critical to success. You see, without discipline, it's not possible for us to follow through and take the actions we need to in order to achieve success. This doesn't matter what area of your life you're working on, it's only possible to achieve success if you're willing to pursue and do what you need to. After all, anything worth pursuing requires work to achieve success. Jordan Peterson describes scheduling, a form of self discipline, as a way of giving structure to the day. Through having structure, you work to be more productive and develop greater freedom in your life as you achieve greater results. So always remember, self-discipline and freedom are essentially two sides of the same coin. That's all well and good, but how do you instill discipline? Well, first and foremost, understand yourself first. Here's the thing, we're conditioned from past experiences which can either allow us to achieve greatness in life or restrict us to mediocrity. Let me give a personal example. I used to believe I was terrible at history as a subject when younger. Why was this? Well, it's because I once took a test and I did terribly. So I assumed I stunk at history and I conditioned myself as someone who wasn't interested in history. However, since then I've come to realize that I have a firm interest in history and if it's important to me, I can remember historical facts. This channel is proof of this, as I look back at other historical figures who have been major influences in the world. You see, I've come to understand that I don't suck at history, but rather I've conditioned myself to believe that I did based on a poor test. However, on reflection what I've come to learn is I didn't do well on that test because the subject and the period of history I was studying simply wasn't of great interest to me. And this is the point, we need to understand when we became the way we are and why because often on reflection we realise we're not limited in the way we think we are, but rather conditioned by past experience. However, when it's something important to you and you know you need the skill or knowledge, then more often than not, you will find a way to get results. Which is precisely the point, you need to raise your standards, not to let your conditioning hold you back. Know what you must achieve and work on achieving it. Motivational speaker Eric Thomas did exactly this. It took him longer than many to earn his degree, but he put in the work and got it. And as he says, there's no date on a degree once you earn it. There's no difference between you and anyone else with the same degree. It can be the best financial time, the best emotional time, the best spiritual time of your life, but you better take control of your state. And if you think you're going to do it just by today, you're wrong. You're going to need to get yourself some rituals. Right now, every one of you in this room is controlled by your rituals. I don't just mean this one, I mean every morning you get up. I know your body, I can look at your body right now and I can guess your rituals. Some of you, your rituals to work out five times a week, I can see it clearly. Four to six times a week, it's obvious. Because you couldn't look like that if you didn't do that. Some form of workout, I don't care if it's walking, lifting, whatever. Some of you, it's obvious that lifting weights is part of it, you can see by that man's muscles. I know, I know what his rituals are, because your life comes from your rituals. If you don't develop the ritual, you're kidding yourself. How many agree with me on this? Raise your hand, say I. And there are rituals that put you in state, and there are rituals that take you out of state. You have rituals in your relationship, you have rituals with your body, you have rituals around your finances, and the rituals that worked in the reaping time of fall in the markets and in business and in real estate, those rituals won't work now. If you do the right thing, at the wrong time, you get pain. I'll say that again. If you do the right, you go, but Tony, I'm doing the right thing, but I'm not being rewarded. If you do the right thing at the wrong time, you don't get rewarded, you get paid. So you better do the right thing at the right time. And to do that, you better know what season you're in. And to do that, you better learn how to change your state, how to take control of your own conditioning. That's what I live for. From here, we move on to our next point, which is to develop discipline, building routines and habits into your life. 
Tony Robbins often describes this as your rituals. The fact of the matter is we're habitual creatures and we do what comes naturally to us in our day. I'm working on this video on the back of having a terrible day, but I'm still here, working on the content. Why? Because working on my content is something that's routine for me. Good days or bad, easy days or hard, and whether I want to or not, it's normality to work on my content. Your ritual will define your outlook in life, and those who can get through thick and thin and still continue to have the discipline to do what's necessary at the end of the day are the ones who will progress through to succeed. However, it's not all about hustle. Working hard with no direction is a fruitless endeavour, and so we go on to our next point, which is to plan a strategy. Now this works in multiple ways. The first is, it gives you focus and directions to do what you need to, to ensure that you reach the end goal. But just as important is having a plan that gives you markers you set yourself against to ensure that you progress in the way you intend to and not drift into procrastination. Tony Robbins often builds his work and material on the back of strategies because they provide proven ways of working to get results. The same is for you. Use strategies to focus on getting results. In addition to having a strategy, keep a journal, which is our next point. A journal can be used for both planning and reflecting, which provides huge benefits. By planning with a journal and specifically writing down what you're going to do, you're significantly more likely to follow through and do what you set out to, as studies have shown. They also give you a focus on what needs doing day to day, and the act of then being able to tick off what you've completed, you give yourself a small dopamine boost to motivate you to keep going. On the flip side, journals give you a chance to reflect. See how you did against your targets, how you achieved them, what you did well, and what you did less so. Finally, you can state how you feel on doing this. Again, writing is critical to supporting you, as by writing and noting your positive feelings you get a dopamine boost, whereas the act of writing negative feelings can give you the opportunity to actively remove the negative state of mind by essentially venting as part of journaling. The next point of improving discipline is to set your state or prime yourself, as Tony Robbins would say. This can be done using the technique of the 15 minutes of fulfillment or doing a different practice if it works for you. The point is to put yourself in the best state you can to undertake the day and the tasks ahead. Now, if you do fulfillment exercises, this breaks down into four activities. First, do breathing exercises to oxygenize the mind and body to peak performance. Second, do exercise to improve physical state and thus your mental state. Third, Feel gratitude for what you have and will have to focus on what's positive in life. Fourth, say affirmations or incantations to set your beliefs in totally and completely fulfilling your duties ahead of you. The next way to instill self-discipline is to focus on the details. Now this relates to your standards, but ultimately don't cut corners or take shortcuts. Most people who have achieved success in life have done so because they sweat the small stuff the details that help them stand out from the crowd. This also works the other way too. Small failures to act add up over time and eventually lead to bigger failures in life. The thing is, we often blame the big event as the failure, but usually it's the little things that led to that event that were the problem. So focus to do the actions you need to and set yourself standards to do them right. Finally, the key to discipline is to have a clear vision, or rather know your why. You see, in the tough times, those moments when you want to stop or feel like giving up, your vision will be what pulls you forward to keep going and doing what's necessary to make it a reality. So live life with discipline and follow through with fulfilling your vision. It might be tough today, but when tomorrow comes, you'll be all the more thankful for having been disciplined. So really what you're after is the emotion and so what i want people to get is the emotion they want now and all it is is a new habit it's learning to discipline this mind right by realizing the mind thoughts are out there and letting them float by and constantly coming back to what can i love about this what can i appreciate it's like if you can learn to love or at least appreciate start to enjoy the things that you used to get upset about how much freedom would you have how much more joy do you have? And I know people have got billions of dollars. I've coached them 
who is like, holy sh! They live in scarcity all the time. One man, I'll, I'll never forget. He's screaming at his wife. I'm in the media. I'm in. I'm in the house, and he's screaming at his wife because she spent some money on a bunch of outfits and stuff like that. And he's a multi-billionaire. He couldn't spend all his money in his lifetime, and then he's totally upset at his daughter, who's in her 20s, who spent some money too. And I'm like, I pulled him aside afterwards, and I said, What do you do this for? And what do you do it for? And he's like, well, it's just it's the principal thing. I said, no, the principal thing is, do you love these people and do you want them to have an abundant life when you have there's you don't have one loss, but you live like you're poor, you know? And it's like I finally got through to him. But so many people, that's why I say money doesn't change you. Money magnifies who you are. So you want to expand the depth of who you are and free yourself from suffering by just knowing it's a pattern of thought and you can change the pattern of thought. So for the question of the day, I want to know which area of your life you are seeking to increase discipline. Let me know in the comments section below. As always, thanks for watching. If you find today's video informative, please consider liking, sharing and subscribing for more content like this.